To show you how release please GitHub action works, I've created an example project on GitHub. It's a monorepo setup containing two projects, uh, Hello World React.js and uh, Hello World uh, Rust Crate. You can check it out, uh, fork it, uh, play with GitHub releases by yourself. This is how the repository looks on GitHub, and I already have uh, published releases for Rust and for React. And we'll go through the process. Important file that automates, that triggers releases, is the workflow setup. In my case, it lists on changes when the push to main is created. So it can be if you directly push to main or if you merge the request from another branch. Uh, since this section needs uh, permission to create a pull request uh, and uh, modify pull request and also modify and create some additional files in the repository, I have to specify the permissions. It's not enough to specify permissions, you also need to authorize your GitHub job. And you can do that by assigning an authorization token. In my case, I'm using the default GitHub token. It will not work by default. You need to allow uh, GitHub workflows uh, to create uh, PRs and you can do that by going to your repository settings, actions, and workflow permissions. Check this, allow GitHub actions to create and approve pull requests. Other thing that you can do is define your own personal access token. Just remember to assign the contents right and pull requests right to it and it will also work. For the action to properly work, besides authorization token, it also needs access to the config file and manifest file. Manifest file is declaration of all your versions. And in my case, it looks like this because already two versions were released. And another file is the config file and it contains the configuration for your packages and also the strategy type to publish your release. In my case, I'm using the Rust and Node, but you can also check out other supported languages. So let's see how the configuration looks like. The schema type is not mandatory, but it will show you a warning if you included, uh, for example, a keyword uh, that is not supported. This is the declaration for two of my projects. React uses the node strategy for release and Rust uses the Rust strategy for release. So what does that mean? Uh, different uh, files will be created or modified and uh, also change log will be created whatever strategy you use. Since I'm using multiple projects, I like my pull requests to be separated and also uh, my releases to be different uh, prefixed with the project tag. When you specify a different project if you're working from a subdirectory of, in my case, it's a monorepo setup, it's important that you specify a path. Without the path, it will not be able to read which types of files it needs to change or create. So let's get back to the workflow file. Uh, this step is uh, my step for debugging, it will, it will fail because uh, it's not always a valid JSON file, maybe because of that, but it's useful, I'll show you why. It's useful because, let's take a look at this one. When I go to print release outputs, okay, it failed, but it doesn't matter. I can just 
toggle this step and see what what kinds of outputs release please created. And these outputs are useful if you want to hook uh, more jobs uh, after your release is created. For example, you would uh, maybe want to put additional artifacts to your just created release or trigger uh, publish to NPM or whatever. Now you can see if I'm using a mono repo setup and I defined different kinds of paths and uh, one of the paths was uh, hello react. The kind of output you get will depend on what path you defined. My path was hello react, so all of these outputs are prefixed with the hello react. Same would be with the hello rust. Now let's go back to actions or just pull requests. So how does release please work? When you push a change, in my case, when I push the change to main, release please analyzed the commits since the last release. Since uh, it was the first release ever, they, it analyzed all of the commits and it detected a commit containing feature react add sample code. You can see that these are conventional style of commits and uh, release please needs the conventional style of commits to know which kind of version is next. Is it a major or a minor or a patch? Since mine was prefixed with the feature, it is a minor release. If it was prefixed by a fix, it would be a patch release. And if the fix or the feature contained an exclamation mark, it would be a major release. It's a breaking change. For other kinds of commits, if you were working, for example, on doc documentation changes, uh, continuous integration, build changes, uh, release please when it got triggered it would not release anything so when i first committed my changes i pushed uh, two feature commits and this action release please got triggered and it detected two build strategies and it detected that it needed to create a minor release And it says, okay, open the pull request for the Rust part and open the pull request for the React part. Now these two pull requests are already merged and releases were created. But the pull request, for example, for Rust contains updated release please manifest because it needs next time to read from this version and detect okay is it a major minor patch it will append a new version it it will increment the new version changelog file created containing my feature commit and also updated cargo file with the new version. After this PR is reviewed and merged, it needs to be done by a human. It's not uh, like auto merged. A new action is triggered by release, please. And you can notice that release, please also creates another branch containing changes related to the new version. Let's go back to the Rust part. Okay. And release, please. Published outputs containing release created, and we will depend 
on this output to trigger our next release and that will be publishing an additional artifact to the current release. And this is just an action that contains testing, building and uploading the released artifact to the current release. If you check out the code, the Hello Rust job will not get triggered unless this one is true. The last, the last step is the uploading of the release artifact. Again, this needs to be authorized by a GitHub token. You can, you don't need to use the default one. You can use your own personal access token, but remember to assign permissions uh, to write to contents right and pull requests right. Uh, maybe just contents right is enough. And this is just the job to update the just created artifact to the current release. Now let's trigger another action. This will not trigger a release because, because this will be only documentation type of change. Okay. I'm using commit is then for building my commit message, but if you're well acquainted with the conventional commit style, maybe you don't need to use it, skip it. I like the CLI tool. So this is the documentation only changes, scope of this change, I don't know, we skip on this one, and uh, this is the update readme, add license. Back to GitHub Actions. This workflow detected, okay, something is pushed, but it is not a major, minor or patch, nothing to release. And the kind of output that you get when there's nothing to release is just these three keys. Okay, so this covers the GitHub workflow action. Uh, what you can do is fork the repository and play with releases, make some changes and uh, push uh, commits, uh, but you need to do it with conventional commit style, otherwise release please versioning won't be triggered. And uh, that's it. I hope it was useful.